The mind behind the Massachusetts massacre. Police say Michael McDermott had an arsenal at home and stashed ammo at work before the shooting started. The FBI's most wanted list, no longer confined to murderers, will tell you who just joined the top ten. Slip sliding away in the icy southern plains and a sudden U-turn on a plan to cut prescription drug prices. This is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. And good evening. Dan is off tonight. I'm John Roberts. As another American community struggles with another shocking eruption of violence, investigators in Boston's northern suburbs are piecing together the life of the man they say did it. Michael McDermott, a quiet, solitary computer programmer who amassed an arsenal of weapons and, say the police, put them to deadly use on the day after Christmas, killing seven co-workers. Randall Pinkston is in Wakefield tonight with the latest. Randall? John, prosecutors say one of the intended shooting victims here at this software company managed to hide behind a chair and a desk, able to see a colleague methodically murder co-workers. Tonight, the lawyers for accused gunman Michael McDermott say he had been under psychiatric treatment and on a medication. 22 hours after allegedly turning his workplace into a killing ground, accused gunman Michael McDermott was arraigned on seven counts of murder. His parents listened on the front row as the prosecutor recounted chilling details of the carnage. Down the car, approximately 40 yards down, they located the bodies of three other individuals. One of them was underneath his desk. He had been shot numerous times. Another was a young lady slumped over a keyboard of her computer. She had been shot through the back. McDermott was arrested without a struggle, sitting in the lobby next to a black tote bag equipped for more death. It was four, minimum of four eight, uh, 30 round magazines fully loaded in that bag, along with boxes of ammunition. McDermott was reportedly angry because the company was about to garnish his wages to pay back taxes. He was a loner, but nothing in his background predicted yesterday's violence. Michael Morgan McDermott, born September 4, 1958 in Plymouth, Massachusetts, served in the Navy from 1976 to 82, spending most of his stint as an electrician aboard the nuclear submarine USS Norwal. He received several awards, including a Good Conduct Medal. He married in 1992, divorced in 97. For nine years, McDermott worked in research and development for the Duracell Battery Company. He joined the Edgewater Technology Company in March as a software tester. His nickname was Mucko, the same as the license plate on his car and his signature on Christmas cards. His telephone answering machine used a computer voice. Here I am, brain the size of the planet. And what does he have me doing? Reduced to answering the phone. When police raided his apartment, they found a virtual arsenal and chemicals which could be used to make bombs. His neighbors didn't have a clue. What did you think when you heard he was arrested? I was glad shooting. that he didn't do it here. <laughs> I really, you know, you know, I mean, God, I didn't know if that stuff was up there. He could have blown us all apart around the whole neighborhood. Experts on workplace violence say McDermott fits the profile. Doesn't have a lot of good friends. Someone who's always frustrated and angry and never smiles and always blames other people for his problems. From the lawyer for McDermott's parents, an expression of remorse, saying their prayers are with the victims and the victims' families. John? Randall Pigston in Wakefield, Massachusetts. Thanks. The aftermath of this workplace rampage is rippling through a community in shock, leaving families and friends of the victims to cope as best they can with sudden wrenching loss. Jeffrey Kaufman has been tracking this part of the story. Yesterday, there was shock. Today, it is simply horror, especially for those who knew the victims. They were very nice people. They were extremely nice people. Consultant Frank Harrington was in the Edgewater offices when the shooting began. For him, the hardest question to answer is why. To do that to other human beings that have done you no harm is just incomprehensible. The seven victims had all agreed to take time away from their families to work this holiday week. Part of a skeleton crew keeping the high-tech company's offices open while most of their colleagues were off. The dead range in age from 29 to 58. Among them, the company's vice president for human resources, Cheryl Troy, and Paul Marceau, a technician. St. Joseph's Church across the street from the company's offices has been designated a grief counseling center for surviving employees and families. 
But for one victim, Jennifer Bragg Capabianco, 29, it was also the church where she and her husband Jeff were married. They had a two and a half month old baby. Father Michael Steele is the parish priest. Yes, like yesterday, um, Jeff had called me uh, from Boston and was trying to reach Jennifer and couldn't reach her. Um, so he asked if I could go over and find out how she was doing. Sadly, Jennifer and six others were dead in a senseless slaughter of co-workers that is all too common. In this country, an average of six people a month are killed by a colleague, twice what the number was a decade ago. Jeffrey Kaufman, CBS News, Wakefield, Massachusetts. Not all of America's worst criminals are killers, and today the FBI drove that point home by adding a new name and a whole new crime category to its famous 10 Most Wanted list. Jim Stewart has more on that. It's a first for the FBI. The first time a classical pianist has been named to the Bureau's 10 Most Wanted list. The first time someone who never used a deadly weapon has made it this far. And the first time, too, for an accused child pornographer. Eric Franklin Rosser has even been featured in People magazine. Only now, he's just a mugshot, the Bureau said, with a long string of indictments. Rosser transported, distributed, and received videotapes, photographs, and magazines containing children pornography involving uh, young female children. Rosser had been a noted U.S. entertainer and piano instructor in Bangkok, Thailand, when he showed up in a sexually explicit video with an 11-year-old girl. The video was later circulated on the Internet. Last spring, Rosser confessed he was a pedophile to a Bangkok newspaper, but wrote, I was born this way. I just want to be seen as a human being with a big problem, not as evil. Now he joins the likes of terrorist leader Osama bin Laden and accused Olympic bomber Eric Rudolph at the top of the FBI's fugitive list, largely because lawmen are concerned he can't control himself. Of great concern is the possibility that Rice, Rosser might continue to use his music skills and talents to lure and harm additional victims. The problem is, admits the Bureau, Rosser disappeared before standing trial in April in Bangkok and hasn't been seen since. Uh, this is a uh, jazz standard by Rogers and Hart called My Romance. Usually the FBI sticks to murderers and bank robbers for its top ten list, but for a well-known pedophile, said one official, we were more than happy to make an exception. Jim Stewart, CBS News, Washington. On the CBS Weather Watch, for many Americans, this has been a holiday on ice, but it certainly hasn't been any fun. The ice and snow that swept across the plains in the south have made travel dangerous and sometimes impossible. Maureen Maher is in the thick of it at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport and joins us now with the latest. Maureen. John, in the last 24 hours, American Airlines alone has canceled more than 1,000 flights from here in Dallas, the majority of which officials are blaming on this powerful and dangerous storm, which has paralyzed much of the South. Flight 3721 Northwest Arkansas, Fort Lauderdale, Fort It was another day of delays and cancellations in the South. The airport's been closed down. It has a lot of ice on it. A thick blanket of ice and snow wrapped around the region, leaving a slippery slope of problems. In Arkansas alone, a half million people lost power, state offices were closed, and a website told readers for the first time in 117 years, the Fort Smith Times Record newspaper would not be published. I don't know whether we'll make it there or not, quite frankly. Yeah, hopefully. At airports around the country, thousands remain stranded, cooped up and camped out. Craig and Kathy Reynolds are among the many who've been trying to get back to Little Rock since Monday. We were visiting his family for the first time in 15 years, and it'll probably be the last time <laughs> that we're going to try and do this. If getting in was difficult, getting out was virtually impossible. More than a dozen people have died on roadways crippled by the slow-moving storm. It's bad, but they, they've salted some of the area, so I think there's a chance you can come and go. It's just whether you want to wreck your truck or not. And it's not over yet. As the storm continues to head east, forecasters are now concerned that once it hits the Atlantic, it will pick up steam. That could mean a major headache with a ripple effect for anyone traveling over the New Year's holiday this coming weekend as that storm heads up the coast. John? Maureen Maher in Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. Thanks for that bit of bright news. Figures being released tomorrow from the government's year 2000 census are expected to show a continuation of the 40-year population migration to the Sun Belt and the Far West. This means the states in green will likely get a total net gain of about 10 seats in the U.S. House of Representatives at the expense of the states in red.
President Clinton today moved to make the federal court system more reflective of the population it serves. With the 106th Congress adjourned, Mr. Clinton took the dramatic step of a recess appointment today to name Virginia Attorney Roger Gregory to the 4th District U.S. Court of Appeals. Serving the Virginias, Maryland, and the Carolinas, the Fourth Circuit encompasses the largest minority population in the country. Yet Gregory will become just the first African American in the court's history to sit on the bench. I am compelled by the facts and history to do what I can to remedy an injustice that for too long has plagued the Fourth Circuit and that I have tried for too long to remedy in the established way. For five years, Mr. Clinton has attempted to appoint a minority judge to the Fourth Circuit but was blocked by the Republican-led Senate. First nominated six months ago, Gregory's recess appointment today will allow him to serve for one year. It's the first time in 20 years that a president has used a recess appointment to fill a judicial opening. Mr. Clinton will challenge the Senate to leave Gregory on the bench by resubmitting his name for confirmation in January. A congressional plan to reduce Americans' medical costs by re-importing prescription drugs from countries where they're cheaper, a measure signed into law earlier this year by President Clinton, today ran smack into a roadblock. And as Eric Engberg reports, it was put there by a member of Mr. Clinton's own cabinet. Prescription drugs are so much cheaper in Canada than at home that American retirees have been organizing bus trips across the border to bargain shop for pills. Just before the election, Congress passed a law to let U.S. pharmacy companies do the same kind of bargain hunting on a major scale by buying and re-importing American-made drugs sold in foreign countries. But Secretary of Health Donna Shalala, in a letter to the president, has now scuttled the plan by citing serious flaws and loopholes which undermine the potential for cost savings. Since she couldn't certify that American consumers wouldn't get lower prices, she didn't want to hold out false hope and be involved in something she thought was not legitimate. Opposition from drug companies had weakened Clinton's original plan, and Shalala said the changes gave drug makers too many avenues to keep prices up. Still, many in Congress thought the plan deserved a try. I think it's a wrong-headed decision. I think it lets the drug industry off the hook. And uh, we will have to find a way to, uh, to respond to this appropriately. Dorgan noted common drugs like Zocor are cheaper in foreign countries where prices are controlled by the government. In Canada, it costs $1.82 per tablet. In the United States, $3.82 per tablet. Same pill, same bottle, same company. Mr. Clinton says he will suggest changes to Congress to make the drug re-import plan acceptable. But with a new occupant coming to this House, one who favored the now rejected plan, it's likely Congress will leave the next move to the Bush administration. Eric Engberg, CBS News, Washington. Off fishing in Florida today, President-elect Bush said he's close to reeling in two more cabinet nominees. He expects to name them after he arrives in Washington tomorrow for a two-day stay. There's new controversy over a nomination Bush has already made, U.S. Attorney General. It turns out his choice defeated Missouri Senator John Ashcroft, rented out his campaign fundraising list while he, Ashcroft, sat in judgment of President Clinton at the impeachment trial. The renter was Linda Tripp. Still ahead on the CBS Evening News, in the Mideast, struggle in the streets and pessimism from the powerful may block peace talks. And later, the end of a long day's journey into the spotlight. Just to let you know, while you're making preparations for the new year, so is Office Depot. We're stocking up on all the office supplies you'll need to succeed in the coming year. So make your plans, dream your dreams, enjoy the holidays. Because while you're celebrating, we'll be right here taking care of business. A happy and prosperous new year from your friends at Office Depot. When the journey is just as important as the destination, count on Chevy Impala. Now, make your money count with as low as 5.9% APR on the 2001 Impala. That's 966 in average finance savings. And with more overall room than Taurus, Camry, and Accord, getting there is just as enjoyable as being there. So, make your money count at your local Chevy dealer. We'll be there. 
facts of life by Lysol. Fat, scary things have been known to appear in showers. Soap scum. Fact, new formula Lysol Basin Tub and Tile Cleaner removes soap scum better than scrubbing bubbles. Life demands Lysol. That's a fact. When you have shrimp and crab claws coming together, you have yourself a spectacular holiday party. Pick up a Red Lobster party platter and go overboard. Super Bowl Sunday. In a special multimedia event, the Publisher's Clearinghouse Prize Patrol will surprise someone with $10 million. You just won $10 million. <laughs> oh, my God. It all happens live on TV. Watch your mail or go to PCH.com. Enter. And on Super Bowl Sunday, the biggest winner could be you. So, Friedkin, as you know, uh, the Christmas rush is over. And, uh, well, uh, I'm going to have to let you go. It's the time of year for some serious cutbacks. So we've taken 50% off all Christmas stuff at the Linens and Things Christmas clearance sale. My dry, itchy skin would flare up. I just wanted to hide. Cordaid helps heal and protect dry, itchy skin fast with maximum strength medicine and special moisturizers. My skin was healed. First aid, fast aid, Cordaid. On the CBS Market Watch, another sign the U.S. economy is losing its sizzle. The index of leading economic indicators fell another two tenths of one percent in November. Online business is clearly in a slump. One job placement service reports 41,000 dot com layoffs this year, nearly a quarter of them this month alone. On Wall Street today, the Dow Blue Chips continued their holiday rally, jumping 110 points. The Nasdaq gained 45. President Clinton tonight urged Israel and the Palestinians to seize the opportunity for peace. A summit conference is set for tomorrow in Egypt. But as David Hawkins tells us, the leaders of both sides are reluctant to commit. Jewish protesters tangled with Israeli police today near the Western Wall. And tonight, demonstrators warned Israel's government against accepting a U.S. brokered peace deal, which would give the Palestinians authority over the holiest site in Judaism the Temple Mount. The Jewish people will not uh, pull out from the places which were the subject for all the uh, prayers and tears and dreams and yearnings in all our history. But to Muslims, the Temple Mount is the noble sanctuary and the site of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Sovereignty over the noble sanctuary has been one of the key Palestinian demands, but not the only one. Palestinian officials say the new American peace plan is worse than the deal they were offered at Camp David more than three months ago. Israel would annex about 5% of Palestinian territory, where most of the Jewish settlers live. In exchange, Palestinians would receive land in Israel's southern desert. And almost none of the approximately 4 million Palestinian refugees would be permitted to return to their former homes in Israel. Israel's Prime Minister Ehud Barak says he'll agree to the U.S. plan, but only if Yasser Arafat agrees first. And that hasn't happened. John? David Hawkins in Tel Aviv. Thanks. Later on the CBS Evening News, remembering Jason Robards, Jr. On film and on stage, an actor worth remembering. And I hate trusting anybody. Seeing is believing. That's what witnesses the Publishers Clearinghouse winning moments say. It's for real! But why be just a witness when you can win $10 million Super Bowl Sunday? Watch your mail or go to PCH.com and enter. With all that stuff you carry around, ever had trouble finding the one thing you need? Like an important receipt or your bank card. Now you can find all your cards and receipts instantly with the amazing Magic Wallet. Is your wallet bursting at the seams? Do you resort to this? You need the Magic Wallet. The Magic Wallet is thin, compact, good-looking, and made of top-quality leather. But watch closely, because you're about to see what makes the Magic Wallet different than any other. Simply put your cash or a receipt inside, close the wallet, and presto. It's magically grabbed and held tight under the strong nylon straps. The Magic Wallet instantly grabs parking stubs, business cards, credit card receipts, and more. So you'll know just where to find them later. But that's not all. These outside pockets hold all your credit cards, driver's license, and more conveniently and securely. And the Magic Wallet still stays thin and streamlined, so it fits easily in your shirt pocket, pants pocket, evening bag, anywhere. 
The Magic Wallet is handsome, convenient, and fun. Your friends will love it. There's no other wallet like it. It's magic. Old-fashioned wallets and money clips made of high-quality leather like the Magic Wallet can cost $40, $80, even $100. Yet they can't do this. But the genuine leather Magic Wallet costs just $14.95. Plus, you'll get a special free bonus when you call now. Our exclusive auto wallet to hold and organize all your car registration and insurance papers. It's yours free when you order Magic Wallet now. Magic Wallets make great gifts. Call within the next 10 minutes and get two for just $19.95. You save $9.95. And get an auto wallet free. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-847-8900 now to get the amazing Magic Wallet at the special TV price of just $14.95 and get the auto wallet free. Or get two Magic Wallets for just $19.95 and save even more. Satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Call now 1-800-847-8900. 1-800-847-8900. Facts of Life by Lysol. Fat, scary things have been known to appear in showers. Soap scum. Fact, new formula Lysol Basin Tub and Tile Cleaner removes soap scum better than scrubbing bubbles. Life demands Lysol. That's a fact. Many hospitals already don't have enough. Tomorrow, a look at a disturbing nationwide trend. A shortage of nurses on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Visions of championships on ice danced in Joey Jones' head long before he even had his own pair of skates or his mother could afford lessons. But persistence paid off, and as Dan Rather reports, the time has come for Joey to begin living his own American dream. All the way over. Over. Lock it. That's better. That's more what I'm talking about. Joey Jones was hooked on skating from the moment he saw it on TV. It was real neat that they were jumping and spinning on a real thin blade, and I wanted to try it one day. He had no skates, but with a pair of socks on a slippery floor, he began to spin and twirl. At the church shelter he and Mom Karen once called home, 11-year-old Joey turned their bare room into a rink of dreams. He was spinning around in the room, and the rest of the mom said that he looked like, you know, he was really ice skating. But the cost of skating lessons for Joey was beyond the reach of his struggling mother. Then coach Jimmy Lewis came into their lives. Actually, I met Joey at a public session at a uh, inner city rink. Even in falling, he would laugh. I mean, that's a big plus. Lewis saw in Joey the raw Better talents back. and determination of a champion. And he out. had no idea what to do, but he was going to try it anyway. And that is the adventure. And the adventure is usually the one that's the most success successful at anything. Lewis agreed to coach Joey for free, and so their adventure together began. Jimmy to me is not only a coach, but now it's coming more to me like a father figure that I never had. Just being a friend to Joey and trying to help him live out his dream is more important and more satisfying to me than anything else. Joey has sponsors now to pay for the costs of competing and a fistful of medals for his proud mom. His dreams now take him far from the streets of Philadelphia. I'm looking towards that gold medal, maybe at the Olympics and Worlds and Nationals. That's what drives me. <laughs> He's doing something that, you know, a lot of kids can't do, especially living in, in a city. Joey can be a national champion. He can be a world champion. He can be an Olympic champion. After beating long odds, he may already be a champion. I'm Dan Rather, and that's this week's American Dream. The American Dream, brought to you by Fidelity. All the expertise, service, and technology to help you see yourself succeeding. Do you remember my client, Mr. Foley? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he uh, wanted to retire and go into teaching. Asia Solodusky. Pre-retire. Uh, he had a uh, pretty substantial portfolio. This was my first day of school. So we worked together to restructure with the goal of providing income so he could become a teacher. I'm loving this. I really am. I'm going to make you... Uh, Not really bad, huh? Like this class and to invest, call, click, or visit Fidelity. Are you ready to ask your doctor about Viagra? 
get ready. Right. Ask your doctor if a free sample of Viagra is right for you. Well, I'm ready for you. I hope you're ready for me. Hmm. Still in the news, the Buick year-end sell-off continues unabated. When Buick issued an additional $500 holiday bonus on select 2001 models, bringing total cashback offers up to $1,500, Analysts predicted an immediate spike in market activity. Now, eager buyers are still storming the floor with no sign of a slowdown. You have to wonder, though, with holiday bonus cash ending January 2nd, how long can these market conditions last? Our son asked our advice about life insurance recently. I told him when we got married, we started our insurance coverage with Globe Life. Only cost one dollar to start. Seemed like a good value at the time. Mm. A lot has changed over the years, but not the cost to start a Globe Life policy. It's still only one dollar. Mm. That was a good value back then, and an even better value today. And everything is handled through the mail or over the internet. Call this toll-free number right now to receive everything you need to apply for coverage. Or log on to globeontheweb.com. Applying for coverage is really easy. No physical exams, just answer a few basic health questions. Globe makes buying life insurance easy. Maybe that's why millions of people have Globe policies. Call Globe today. For complete information and applications, log on to globeontheweb.com or call Globe Life today at 1-800-257-2200. That's 1-800-257-2200. Tensions between landowners who post their property and hunters who trespass are growing to the danger point. More on the shooting death of a trespassing hunter at 6. 44 years ago, actor Jason Robards Jr. was discouraged and ready to try another line of work when he was given the lead in Eugene O'Neill's The Iceman Cometh. The rest is Broadway and Hollywood history. Robards died yesterday. Jerry Bowen looks at his illustrious career. Jason Robards Jr. was most famous for playing famous people on the big screen. Washington Post editor Ben Bradley in All the President's Men. You guys are about to write a story that says the former Attorney General, the highest ranking law enforcement officer in this country, is a crook. Just be sure you're right. And author Dashiell Hammett in Julia, roles for which he won back-to-back -back Oscars. But it was the theater that he revered. I love the theater because it's, it's alive. It's a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it begins a life. It's a life. It's a life. Robards' father was a veteran of 175 films, but Robards Jr. intended to be a professional baseball player. After surviving Pearl Harbor and discovering the works of Eugene O'Neill, though, he embraced acting. I kept swearing to her every night that this time... And it was his 1956 performance in O'Neill's The Iceman Cometh that established him as a force in the theater, a presence he carried through more than 100 stage, film, and TV roles, and earned him Kennedy Center honors last year. His last film role just last year was that of a crusty TV producer in Magnolia. But what drew me to it, too, is the fact that the guy that I'm playing is dying of cancer. In reality, Robards had come out of a coma and off his own sickbed for the part. But acting was never about money, he once said. It was about performing, giving life to words. Yesterday, his own struggle with cancer ended. He was 78. Jerry Bowen, CBS News, Hollywood. And that's the CBS Evening News for this Wednesday. For Dan Rather, I'm John Roberts, CBS News in New York. Thanks for watching. Good night. For news 24 hours a day, cbs.com on the Internet and on our interactive partner, America Online, at keyword CBS News. A disturbing nationwide trend. More patients, fewer nurses. Tomorrow, experience CBS News. From the News Channel 5 Network, this is News Channel 5 at 6. Your news and information leader. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Clark. And I'm Amy Marcellus. Vicki Yates has the night off. It's a bizarre murder case that has police in the middle of a massive manhunt. They're looking for a Sumner County man accused of murdering a hunter who killed a deer on his property. News Channel 5's Ben Hall found out the suspect's family is no stranger to violence. 